Hi there, welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another new project. This is another project sponsored by PCBWay and it involves boards. I'll be sharing those boards in the uh, PCBWay website so you can actually build them yourself. And it is a probe. This is the uh, improvement that I wanted to, to make on the probe that I did before. I got a lot of comments and the main feature that people were asking for was automatic gain control. I had no idea how to incorporate that but I did a lot of digging and I found some very, very interesting solutions. I think so anyway. I've put it into this new project and the result astounded me. <laughs> so um, I'm really, really pleased with this result. And the result is actually quite interesting because it works in a way that I did not expect. But what it does do is it gives you the ability with a very, very sensitive probe to have automatic gain control so you don't have massive fluctuations in audio level, tone level, from the lowest um, input signal to the highest input signal. That's exactly what I wanted. I think that's exactly what I got, albeit in a rather strange way, but I won't give up all the secrets. See the video for yourself and uh, enjoy. I'm always happy when I get one of these. Another set of boards from PCB Way, who are sponsoring this project. And once again, I want to thank PCB Way for their sponsorship. Without them, I wouldn't be able to make boards like these. Not by a long shot. Believe me, I've tried. I've opened this up, as you can tell. I ordered 10 boards. And what are these? Well, this is the um, second iteration of my high impedance AFRF probe, which uh, if you've been following my channel, you might have, might have seen the first version of recently. What I've done here is I've tried to implement all these suggestions or as many suggestions as possible after that first attempt. And the idea was to keep the high impedance um, characteristics of the probe, obviously, but add some adjustable or automatic gain control. Get this thing to work more or less level at various uh, levels of signal. So we don't have to uh, block our ears or end up with having to change the volume level on the audio amplifier stage of the probe. Now, let me just explain. This was something that um, All The Gear No Idea first attempted, and I shamelessly copied his design and made a board for it and uh, experimented with it. Now, what I've decided to do here is actually, uh, again, probably shamelessly copying somebody else as well with this little block that you see over here, but I'll get to that in a minute. Down here, you've got the Pro PCB. This time, I've not done a uh, surface mount version. This is just through hole. I've made the same width, the the, uh, the actual board is the same width, so it'll go into a tube that'll act as the probe. You can use all sorts of things for that. I'll show you what I've done. And I've also added two boards. These are for LM386 uh, audio amplifier P uh, ICs. So you can just use the probe feeding directly into the board. The board also then provides the power supply to the probe. So this thing is all nicely contained. The reason I've kept this stage the same is because I was actually very happy with it. This audio stage, this is basically a small little audio amplifier. It takes LN386, which are pretty common, and it provides enough volume for the resulting uh, tone to be heard. And there was nothing wrong with this section of it, so I left it exactly the same. I did work on this, however, and I'll show you what I've done differently. What we've got here now is a, a probe with a high impedance, when I say high impedance, probably 5 meg plus, maybe more. It's supposed to be more, but as Chris on All The Gear No Idea discovered, there's something called the Miller effect, or Miller capacitance, which does drop the um, high frequency response a little bit, but it's pretty good. So it's got the same input stage. I have not given gain to this first um, JFET. JFET, as you know, very high impedance, but no gain on this one. It's just a source follower. So whatever comes in, comes out. And then I've got an automatic gain stage over here. And yeah, I know this looks like it's in the wrong place. This should be after the diode, the uh, detector stage. But as you'll see, or as I'll try to show you, this actually works better this way. Then you've got the detector stage. Uh, there's a little power supply here to, to provide power to that board, that little module, which again, as I said, I will show you. And then you get your audio, audio coming out. Let me show you the schematic. It'll probably be easier to understand this rambling that I'll be going on it. And um, it actually works very, very well because I built one and I've experimented with it, but I'll show you this one step at a time. 
This is the full schematic for the unit that we have here. And I'm going to start with the end first. Let's do that, because this doesn't change whatsoever. What we have here is the power amp section, exactly the same as it was before. These three tags or connectors here are, this is the audio in coming in here. This is a nine volt supply going to the probe and there's the ground. Now, the way I've done this, this is actually a jack socket. So a 6.3 millimeter stereo jack socket. And the way I've done it is you wire it up with the, uh, the tip being the supply line, the nine volts, it goes up to there. The one, which is the uh, sleeve, goes to ground. And the ring in the middle is the audio that's coming in from the probe and goes into here. It's got a uh, coupling capacitor here, 100 nanofarads, goes to the top of a volume pot. This is just a level pot with a minimum level. Doesn't really ever go down to zero. 100 ohms to ground. And this then feeds this audio amp section, which is practically done as per the uh, data sheet that you'll find on this uh, LM386. This thing's providing, I think, about 30 dB of gain, if I'm not mistaken. So all you get here is whatever audio comes in here, gets amplified, goes out to the speaker. No big deal, right? Now, what is a big deal is I did this on the board, and the way I've done it is this guy here is actually designed on the board in such a way that it actually holds the board backwards. In other words, the actual pot that you put on here is one of those 90 degree pots, and you can use this to attach it to whatever, um, you attach the pot to the board, and then the actual pot is used to bolt the unit, the whole little board, to whatever surface, whatever speaker you're using. Then all you do is connect the speaker. What I've done in the last one is I've used a existing speaker that I had here as a dummy load, which works very, very well. And this is it here. I've got the module in the back here. There's the volume control. There's our jack that goes to the probe. And I've actually got this switch here that selects between tracer function, which is this tracer, and or the probe. And uh, the speaker can be used as a dummy load as well because I've got this connected at the back. It's just a way for me to have used this for multiple purposes. That way I don't have to have too many devices on my desk or my bench when I'm working. But in the previous video, I show exactly how I wire this up. So if you want, you can have a look at that and see what I've done. You can put this little amp, this little power amp with a speaker practically attached to any speaker you want, not necessarily the way I've done it here. So that's what I'm using as my uh, amplification stage. It's got batteries in there. So when I switch it on, onto tracer, I should say probe, this goes on, tells me that the probe is on. When I put that off, then I've got the normal function of either just speaker or dummy load because I've got a couple of resistors in there. That has got nothing to do with these, okay? So that's what I'm using. So with that explanation out of the way, let's have a look at the actual probe. This probe here works very much like the other one. You've got a little pad there. This is just to, so we can solder the, um, it creates a pad on the PC board. So we can solder the actual tip through a 100 picofarad capacitor, just to make sure that there's no DC going in here. Also, we don't need very high levels of uh, signal going in here. This capacitor has got to be high voltage. This one is uh, 630 volts, because if you're using this on tube gear, <laughs> that's probably what you'll find. You'll zap this otherwise. So this is set up in the simplest form as a source follower. Whatever comes in here comes out there. That goes through a 100 nanofarad capacitor. Now, this is where things got weird, okay? I expected, I expected to use a booster right, a volume or amplitude booster over here with automatic gain control. That would make sense, right? You bring this out, goes through the detector stage, and then you've got your detected audio or detected signal, the audio component on a, well, a modulated wave, a modulated carrier, and then you would have an, an amplification stage that is automatic gain controlled, so you wouldn't have to be playing with this spot all the time. It worked, sort of. But then I tried something. I put it here. And when we come to this module, it's, it's really magic. I put that module here. So whatever signal comes out here, goes in there, gets amplified. And listen to this, by 40, I think it's 40, 50 or 60 dB of gain. And then it hits the diodes, okay? And that's when this detector stage, which is just, you know, it's, you've got your detector diode here, germanium, 1N34A or similar, one here to ground. This uh, does the detection. So you've got yourself a detector stage. This is the typical 
you know, germanium dye detector stage from here to there. That's what you find in most of them, okay? But this detector stage comes after a massive boost in amplitude over here, which, as I said, doesn't make sense to me because what you've got here is either audio, which is something you want to hear and which would go through this path anyway, or you'll have a very high frequency carrier with an audio tone modulated on it, like a radio station, you know, or you'll have measuring an IF signal at 460 kilohertz with an audio tone modulated on it. So that's what you would expect to see. But when you amplify it, you would expect that amplified uh, signal to then hit that uh, the diode uh, block there. But you wouldn't expect this to amplify all the way up to, you know, 460 kilohertz. However, that's exactly what happens. It works. It works. And don't ask me how they built this little module, which I will show you, to amplify, to have such a wide range of amplification. My guess is it's actually doing detection in it, but that's a different story. So this goes through and then it hits the diodes and then you get a signal coming out. So whatever hits here, this section, this point here, is actually gone through an amp stage with automatic gain control. And then it hits these and you then you still got the signal going out, going to your audio stage, and you then have a volume level control. This up here is just normal. As I had before, just a uh, smoothing capacitor for any noise that comes on the supply. The supply comes from, from there, right? From that point there, through the umbilical cord, which is a jack socket and plug that'll plug into the, the amp section. Nine volt supply from the battery comes in here. A little bit more smoothing for any noise that's on that line. A reverse diode protection, which is just to avoid you mess making mess ups and blowing this the diode up. And then there's another little detail here, which is this little module, which I keep saying and repeat, I will show you, needs a five volt supply. And we've got nine volts over there. So I've used a small voltage regulator, five volts voltage regulator. One of the really small ones, because this doesn't really draw much current. And that's just set up. So with a little bit of smoothing on the output here to provide a five volt supply for our little module. There's something else on the module, which is there are three positions that you can set a particular gain. If the gain switch is connected to ground, it'll give you a certain gain. If it's left open, flying in the air, it'll give you a different gain. And if it's uh, connected to VC, VDD, to the five volts, it'll give you a different gain. So I've added a little switch, and this is really miniature, but you'll see how it comes out at the end. This little switch allows you to jump between 40, 50, or 60 dBs of gain on this module over here. Let's have a look at this module. The module I'm using is a MAX4466 electric microphone preamplifier. Now, if you type that into Google, as I've done up here, you'll find hundreds of sources selling these things, a heck of a lot of uh, versions. Most of the ones are similar to the one I'm using, like here it is, there's one there. The one I'm using is this one here that has uh, it's got various output levels that you can set. There's a simpler version, as you can see up here. This is where I bought mine from. I brought it from a maker shop in Germany. It's just more convenient for me to get things from Germany sent to Portugal. And here you have it. You've got an electric microphone, which is what this is. This is a preamp with automatic gain for an electric microphone. And uh, when you remove that microphone, what do you have? You've got an audio amplifier with automatic gain. Now. As you can see here, there's a, if you leave this gain control here floating, you get 50 dB, sorry, 60 dB of gain. If you ground it, you get 50 dB. And if you connect it to the supply line, you get 40 dBs. Maximum output, 2 volt peak to peak, DC offset 1.25. So the output has got DC on it. And the connectors are ground, supply voltage, 5 volts, up to 5 volts. The gain connector, which you do whatever you want with, like this. The output, which is the audio output, with a 1.25 volt DC uh, on it. And AR, which is the action time. It's the um, recovery time. But I won't go into that, because I did not deal with that whatsoever. Here's the underside. <laughs> Somebody seems to have built this at home. But this is what you get. And I paid €4.95, so 5 bucks for it, OK? It arrived very quickly. You can get this anywhere, get it wherever you want. Now, this is really interesting because I saw another 
channel use this, restore our radios, as exactly what we're doing here in a probe, but he was uh, actually amplifying the audio section, which is what I planned to do with it, okay? Not to amplify the RF. That was crazy. I don't know why that works. But anyway, if we go through here, we see there isn't really much in terms of explanation, but this thing uses a particular chip, which is the MAX9814. And if you look for the data sheet for that, you get this. And this gives you a heck of a lot more information. All the information you need on here. As you can see, this is for, it's got a bias supply so that you can supply bias voltage to your um, electric microphone. But we won't bother about that because I'm not using it at all. All the characteristics and what I'm looking for is the actual, there we go. That's our typical application. And what you have here is the microphone goes on there. So we use this as the uh, audio input. There's a capacitor actually protecting it from the DC that the microphone bias uh, section is providing. There's a capacitor protecting it from the mic in. If you wanted to, you wouldn't need to put a uh, separate capacitor over here. You could simply remove this resistor and that capacitor does its job. Eh, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I'm just putting a capacitor to isolate it from the previous section. Everything else stays pretty much standard. If you look through the detailed description, it'll tell you exactly how to set this up. You really do not have to do much else. This is just for nerds like me who want to know how these things work. It'll describe to you how you adjust the gain. It describes to you how to um, adjust the attack time. So how quickly this thing will react and how quickly it will release the automatic gain control, blah, 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 blah. The important thing is this thing comes as a small module, which I can then just take into consideration and create the um, holes on the board on the PCB where this thing will fit. And it's incredibly small, so it fits beautifully onto my board. Let me show you what this thing looks like. I actually bought three of these and I never trust just one <laughs> in case I mess it up. This is what you get. See that? It's so cute. So small. And as you can see, you've got your, I've got to read this through the camera, it's so small. Gain float, 60 dBs, uh, ground, so connected the gain pin, connected to ground, you get 50 dBs. The gain connected to VDD, you get 40 dBs, maximum output, exactly as we saw there. And as you can see, this thing is very self-contained. It's got the chip there. It's got all the components there. If you wanted to re remove that resistor that's providing the uh, bias to the um, electric microphone, it's one of those there, but I wouldn't bother. I just put a cap in front and one at the back, make sure everything's nicely isolated. So all I did then is, this is useless to me, just heat that up, those two pins there, that's the electric microphone, and pop, it comes out. You use then the, um, you can use the ground over here, or you can use the ground over there, and your signal goes into where the microphone was. And there you got it. That's what you get. And this then fits on the board. The way this is designed, if you imagine the microphones out of here, the way this is designed is it's meant to fit exactly like that, okay? These holes are exactly the ones you've got on there. And you put a little bit of space here. You don't need much space. And I didn't put much space because I don't want this thing to scrape on the tube that I'm going to use to house this thing, which I'll show you in a second. And I've got another hole down here with a little wire that'll go straight through from the, there to there, which is my input. And Bob's your uncle. Okay. Now, let me show you what this uh, thing looks like when it's built. Here we have it. Here we have it. So what have we got here? We've got a probe. Now this probe, or rather this tip, why did I use this? This is an old oscillator. Uh, this is an old uh, oscilloscope probe. And uh, the switch, the switch that you use to connect times one times 10, it was a little damaged on this one. So what I did is I cut it off there and I've used the internal board that supplies the, uh, the tip. I've just scraped all the resistors on there. There's, res I think it's nine meg of resistance on there. All I've got now is a wire going straight through. And the reason I want this is I want that ground there. Remember this, these clips, these uh, oscilloscope uh, probes have a ground clip. And we need a ground clip when we're probing a device. So the best one to use is actually a removable one. 
So this clips on there like that. And I've got my ground probe. And it's white, on purpose, more visible. So we've got our uh, signal coming in here. There's our high voltage uh, capacitor to make sure we don't, uh, we don't damage the device. There's our FET. The FET, in this case, is getting slightly bent in because this thing's going to a tube. There's our, uh, this is a DC decoupling cap. This is the capacitor that uh, links the signal from the source of the JFET to the input, which is at the bottom here of that device, which is where the microphone goes, okay, was our device, and then everything else exactly the same as before. We've got our two germanium diodes over there. We've got our resistor capacitor to ground, just to allow those to, uh, to uh, detect. This capacitor is used to couple the signal from the output of there to the top of those diodes. What else do we have here? This little device here is to provide, it uses the nine volts, and it provides five volts to our little unit on there. The um, JFET is using uh, nine volts. I could probably, I could probably get away with using five volts on there as well, which means I could actually bring in five volts from the amplifier. But nah, this was just as easy. And also, I don't want to mess around with the amp section. I'm using exactly the same amplifier board, the exact same setup that I have from the previous version. There's our protection diode. These two uh, smoothing capacitors are on the underside, bent over so that we can fit this in the tube. And here's a little sexy single pole double throw switch. This is on, off, on. These things are very small. It's just an on, off, on switch, which allows me to leave that gain control floating. So we get 60 dB. Connect to the one side, it shorts to ground. So it gives me, I can't remember what it is now, 40 dB, is it? Floating 60, ground 50 dB. And the other way goes to Supply voltage, 5 volts, so that gives me 40 dB. And this thing is going to stick out the back of the probe here. This little wire here is to, uh, this is connected to ground. This will allow me to solder it to the side of the tube that I'm going to use. And I've got a tube. It's exactly the same one as I used before. And this thing fits beautifully. Let me show you how this works. I've got to remove this ground clip. Okay. And I'm going to have to remove this because I need to put a grommet on here. I need to actually thicken this with a grommet on here so that it fits nice and snugly into there. But once I've done that, this thing goes through. And I'm going to, I've got this, uh, I've got a section of the, uh, of the tube, of this metal tube, tinned on the inside. So I can then just solder that to it and I've got the whole thing properly grounded. And that means that this then, when I put the cover on, which will probably be just hot glue, I'll have access to the switch and I can change the gain. And what we have on this side, when this thing is straightened out, is this. With the possibility, probability, you'll definitely need it, of connecting the ground clip on there. Really nice. Really, really nice. And I've got to tell you, I've been playing with this on the, the Grindix Satellite 650 that I've been uh, working on. And it works very, very well. It works a heck of a lot better than the previous iteration, which is, that was the idea. I really don't understand one thing though. Maybe someone can explain it to me. The signal coming out of the uh, source of this JFET, if you are detecting uh, an AM signal, let's call it an IF signal of 460 kilohertz with audio on it, it's getting amplified by this thing. Now this thing should, this is an audio amplifier. This thing is supposed to amplify up to maybe 20, 30 kilohertz. How the heck does it go all the way to, I've tested it, it goes all the way to 1.5 megahertz. I can actually feed a signal, we'll try that, I'll experiment that uh, with that and show you. I can feed a signal of over one megahertz with a tone on it, amplitude mod modulated, and I can hear the tone on the end here at very, very low input levels, very low, much, much lower than what I needed to make the uh, previous version work. So, as I said, I was experimenting with this. I put this thing at the end, and then for some reason, I said, let me try it at the front, probably just by mistake. And then this thing suddenly started working a hell of a lot better. So some of these things you discover by mistake. It's true. Believe me, it's true. I was made that way. So here we go. Let me uh, put this in the tube. And this is necessary so we don't get noise making a 
a racket here. This protects it from all the noise that's in the, on the workbench over here. And then I'll show you how this thing works. So here's the final result. I've got my um, tube in place. That thing was fitted with that grommet. I uh, had to thicken the base with some heat shrink, about four layers of it. And then the grommet fit tightly on there, stretched a bit. So it fits very, very well into the tube. And um, yeah, everything came out as expected. And then the final result is covered with this uh, heat shrink. And I've just marked there 40 dB, 60 dB and 50 dB. So I know how to operate this. This switch actually works quite well because the PCB is fairly snug to the side. The uh, ground of the PCB is soldered to the inside of the tube. So we've got a shielded tube and that works very well. And now I've got my ground connector clipped on there and it's here. And I'm going to try it just with a signal generator to show you just what we get. So first things first, plug it in here. There's our volume control. Switch it on. You can hear it buzz. And of course, depending on where this is, it's on 50 at the moment. On 60, more buzz. On 40, less buzz. Okay, let's leave it on 50 for now. And I've got the signal generator here. I'm going to connect the ground. And I'm going to connect this to the tip. And I think you can hear that. Now what we're listening to is a 460, actually I had it at 450, European radio Zamor 460. That's a 460 um, kilohertz carrier with a one kilohertz tone on it, modulated. And I've only got 30% modulation. Let me give it about 50% modulation. Okay, let's, uh, let's be kind to this baby. Now that carrier is two millivolts RMS. Two millivolts RMS coming in here with a tone on it. That's what we're getting, okay? Now that is really low down here. In fact, if I go to 60, it sometimes gets too noisy. That would probably be perfect. That's on 40 dB. But let's leave it on 50. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attenuate this signal with my step attenuator and I'm going to give it 3 dB of attenuation. See that it drops and then it picks up again because the automatic gain control kicks in. That's 3 dB of attenuation of a 2 millivolts RMS carrier signal at 460 kilohertz. I'm going to give it another 6 dB of attenuation. And there it comes back. I can up the volume a bit. Let me give it another 12. I can still sort of hear it. Whoops, that slipped. I can hear it very faintly. Now remember, this is 2 millivolts RMS with, what is that, 12, 18, 19 dBs of attenuation. Call it 20 dBs of attenuation. So that is 0.2 millivolts RMS. If I'm testing an IF uh, transformer and I've got 0.2 millivolts RMS, there's something wrong with the transformer. So uh, I know that's working well. As for the frequency range, let me take the attenuation off. Whoa, that's a lot of gain on there. That would be perfect, you see? But I want to try something else. I'm going to increase that carrier frequency. It's on 460, I'm going to give it 600 kilohertz. Can still hear it very well. Seven, nine, there's one megahertz. One megahertz carrier with that. Let's see what happens. It's too much noise. Actually, that's probably 
the best. I'm liking this, whoops, I'm liking this lower gain, 40 dBs. I've got a 1 megahertz carrier at 2 millivolts RMS with a tone on it, and I'm hearing it. This is the part I can't understand. I don't understand how that little preamp is amplifying that carrier, that frequency. But it is. And um, as for audio, I'm going to get rid of the high frequency stuff now. Take off the modulation. Now I'm going to go down to one kilohertz audio. You can certainly hear that. And again, that is two millivolts RMS. Let me attenuate that. It's minus 12 dB. Minus 18 dB. Minus 21 dB. Still there. Now I'm going to attenuate it another 24 dB. Eh, still sort of there. On 50 dB of gain, I can hear it. What I've got coming out there is a 1 kilohertz tone at 2 millivolts RMS attenuated. What is that? 12, 18, 21, 45 dBs. 45 dB of attenuation. And I'm picking that up. Admittedly, with quite a bit of noise. So that is great. This is, this is much, much, much more sensitive than I expected. That's getting rid of 24 dBs. Now, watch this. If I leave this without any attenuation, Let me put this on the minimum setting. Now I'm going to increase the amplitude from 2 millivolts to 10 millivolts. It is louder. Actually, this is on minimum. Let's go up. I'm now going to... Ah. You see, this has reached its uh, maximum uh, amplitude because I've got it to at 80 millivolts RMS, 180 millivolts RMS, 260 millivolts RMS. So you see where we're getting at. Let me switch that off. This thing is giving me that attenuation, or rather that gain, with a top limit. So it doesn't blast my ears on this. This is what, what was happening with the other one. I had to literally work with my finger on this uh, volume knob because sometimes it just blasted. At the moment, yes, it does go up, but it does have that, that limit to the gain. So what have we found here? We've got a, a probe which um, detects RF, detects AF, automatic gain to a degree, three levels. It is incredibly sensitive, very, very sensitive. In fact, I've been playing with this thing um, I don't have the radio out at the moment, but I've been playing with this thing, approaching certain points on the radio, and I can pick it up with without contact. So it is, it does work to a degree as a contactless uh, probe. Always good to have the ground there anyway, because remember, even if it's contactless, what's happening is you're coupling capacitively due to the distance between the tip and whatever whatever it is you're detecting. It could be just a wire, okay? So you don't actually have contact, but it's always referenced to a ground. So this ground clip is important. At first I thought I'd get away with just, you know, playing with this thing like a wand inside a radio without ground, but that doesn't work too well. So that, my friends, is the result. I'm really chuffed with this. I really am. I'm really, really chuffed with this. I like it. This thing's going to come in very, very useful. I'm, I'm keeping the other one intact, the previous one. It's still got the jack there. It'll plug in this, just like this one does. Might come in useful. Don't know if you ever need two probes, but um, I think this one's going to become my go-to probe. So I hope this thing proves useful to you. I hope you um, are inspired to uh, make an attempt at building it. Get some boards. I'm putting the uh, boards on the share section of uh, PCBWay's website. I want to thank them again for sponsoring this video and the boards. And uh, I want to thank you for your company. I want to thank uh, Chris, all the gear, no idea, for the inspiration that started this project. I want to thank uh, Restore All Radios for 
the idea of using that, um, that little preamp. I really do like his videos as well. He goes into some pretty interesting technical detail. You should check him out. So once again, thanks for watching. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel, you know what to do. You can do so on Patreon. Bye for now and stay safe.